Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So I'm here with the Squire Jaguar Bass. Yeah, this is going to get a makeover just like any, everything else that I've been doing. So I'm going to get this body stripped down and kind of look into a few things here and there. Get rid of all these holes, sand down the top, and uh, have a nice clean or fresh or somewhat fresh canvas to work on. Now I don't want to go through these paint that much because I will be using this paint as kind of my primer uh, as I go into the next steps of painting this thing. Now if I go through the top coating and go through the sanding sealer that's on here, well then I'm going to have to prime certain areas and stuff and then feather sand that to where it won't blend in and won't show through the next layer of new paint that goes on here. So I want to get rid of all of these holes that were from the pit guard, strip everything off this body, take the neck off, see if there's anything goofy or funny underneath the neck. Right now I have the Epiphone Les Paul 100 sitting outside that is drying. I've got some clear on there. That thing came out really, really nice. The only thing I didn't like with it is trying to stretch the lace over the body. It is an arch top body and it does have a pretty deep cut out on one part of it. So trying to stretch the lace over that and get the contours of the body. It did show a little bit of a blurry around the artwork that was in the center of it, which to be honest, um, it kind of works out because it makes the artwork that's in the middle pop out a little bit more. So instead of being a mistake, that actually worked out. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the inside of the horn, the cutout on there, with the lace because of how deep that cutout was. This body here would be really perfect for putting lace on it because I'm not going to have to stretch it too much over any deep cutouts on this. This is pretty much really nice and contoured really good for lace. So I have some lace on order. I got a special lace that's going to go on this. Might be doing a little airbrushing on that lace. I don't know yet. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a real nice airbrushing kit. And uh, I got the paints. I got the knowledge. I just have to do it. So right now, let's get into cutting wires here and start disconnecting shit. I want to get rid of a lot of these pickups I'm not going to be using. Uh, I do have to dry fit the new pickups that I've got, which are the EMGs for this. I'm going to keep this an active guitar, get rid of this, whatever this little equalizer piece of crap was or is. So I really don't need too much of anything on here, and I'm going to clip wires a lot of grounds on this let's see here all right so that's that for this I'm probably going to use this plate for this and with the EMGs I'm going to have enough as far as the controls go so this will kind of be like a little bit of like a Les Paul style where you can control separately the uh, pickups by the volumes and tones. Alright, so you know what? I should use my drill here. Give me the right bits for the job. This will be a smaller bit. Start removing these pickups. Probably a nice chunk of foam underneath here. Nice long screws, that's what I got I gotta say about this. I've had some of these where the bases have the foam underneath the pickup, but a short screw that's barely threaded into the body of the guitar. Now there's nothing wrong with these pickups. Yep, nice foam on there. They got some hot glue over here to keep the wires from coming out of there and also yeah, they kind of locked in not too much the pickup so let's go ahead and remove this one again nice long screws
And see, this is something that I would have done if you can kind of see inside of here. They grounded the pickup cavities. I would have done the same thing. And it's kind of nice that they did so. Alright, so let's get this jack off of here. This is going to be a screw on. Got a nut on the back. This guy's got to come out. I think this is just pressed in. Now it's four screws, so I will be using this. I will be using this uh, thing. Okay, I gotta use a screwdriver. I will be using this battery. This battery case for this. I'm like juggling a couple things at the same time as I'm talking here. And you can tell it too, huh? Like I said, this body is like brand new. This guitar is like brand new. Got it real cheap because it had an electronic problem, which was a real stupid easy fix. But I guess Fender didn't pick it up or wherever this thing came from. Where did this come from? Indonesia. All right, so I've got black wires connected over here. And no more. Yeah, it was this circuit here that was messed up. One of the traces was bad on it. Well, I won't be using that anymore, so I'm not really concerned about it. Find the right wrench that goes in stack. Get inside here. Nope, one more. I will be using this barrel jack so that will be something that will come in handy with active pickups because it's already got the switch built into it considering this had an active EQ on it it's got a washer and a gasket or rubber washer whatever you want to call it all right so let's get this neck off of here change out my bit because the bit that's going to be on here is bigger and let's see what's going on with this neck as far as having some type of goofy plastic or wood or some type of shim underneath it here from hanging from doing the paint let's flip this over nothing but a lot of a lot of burrs a lot of pieces of wood a lot of pieces of, of wood and debris underneath there so I'm gonna have to kind of clean this up a little bit because of the burrs I don't like that a lot of wood inside of here that need to be needs to be cleaned out yeah so that'll be taken care of uh, the neck really doesn't need anything there are some marks on it that I can get rid of it's just cosmetic but there's really nothing wrong with this neck it's really nice and smooth no chipping no chunks taken out of it no scratches well it's flat, so you're not really going to see the scratches on camera, but I could see them right now. So the neck is pretty good. Don't have to do anything with that. The frets are in good shape. 
So now what I got left is this bridge. Any screws on this side? And the bridge is loose already. Nice long screws in there. Now this bridge, there is nothing wrong with it, so I really don't have to replace it. They did kind of angle the saddles to go in an arch, which that's a no-no. But there's really nothing wrong with that, so I'll probably reuse that. Here's the ground for the bridge. Don't need that anymore. Alright, so I got these left. You have a felt in there for the protection of the body. All right, so I have not opened this box to see what's inside of it. I'm sure there's just going to be some pickups inside of it. Not that really big of a deal, but I do want to dry fit this and make sure that not going to be an issue or I'll have to do some cutting before I end up doing the painting. So I'd rather cut first then paint. Ooh, pretty aren't they? Ooh, these look a little bit smaller. So let's take this one here. See how she fits in there? Oh, she drops right in. Yeah, and I'm not going to have any issues with this at all. It drops right in there, no problems whatsoever. It'll probably stick up pretty high. These ones here. See that the holes, mounting holes match up, so that's not going to be an issue. And here's the pick guard. So the pick guard is clears them with no problems. I should trim it just a little bit, just a hair, not much, but looks like it'll fit just fine without having any issues. Let's see what else is inside here. Your paperwork here. This side's empty. And this side comes with all right, all your hardware that's needed. So you have. One, two, three. Uh, three pots. Your circuit, your plug, which I'm not going to use. All your wiring. Okay, that's fine. And it comes with your screws for mounting the pickups, which I might use those or I might use the other ones that came with this guitar. And put these guys all back. So that's what's in the box. So now I know I don't have to really do too much trimming on anything. If anything, it'll just be the pick guard itself. I am going to use the pick guard, but I'm also going to trim the pick guard because I want to remove. Let's see which way does this go? Yeah, like this. So I am going to trim the pick guard. I want to remove, uh, line up the holes. There you go. I want to remove most of this right here. So I have to check. I got meat inside of here with the wood, so I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I got plenty of room here, so I'm probably going to go from this screw hole and cut and go around to this screw hole. So it's only going to be a small plate. Just Going to cover up the opening over here, then I got the chrome one that will go here. Not that big of an issue. That stuff is very easy to cut. Alright, so I got everything bagged up, put away, all the parts for this thing. I will be using the bridge, I will be using the tuners, um, I'll be using a lot of the screws, everything that this, this thing came with. 
will be going back on here as far as uh, hardware goes. As far as electronics, that'll be replaced. Not an issue at all. So I have the green, well, not the green, but the dollar bill Kramer off to the side right now because I'm waiting on paint. I don't like how the green turned out on it and I'm not happy, if I'm not happy with it, you know me, if I'm not happy with it, it's gonna get redone. So I had to order some more paint for it, a uh, different color green, that's probably gonna match more with the color of the bills than anything else. So I'm waiting on that. Plus I ordered a shitload of clear coat. So that'll be coming up soon. All right, so I need my CA glue. I need a wick. Grab a couple of these. I do need to cut this because I don't need this long of a length. And here's the CA glue. I'm using thin CA glue for this. I need my spray for activators for the CA glue and I should load toothpicks so like I said I want to plug up a lot of these holes leaving probably these holes alone this one here I'm gonna plug so I'm thinking I'm gonna go around like this into this one so I'll plug this one and these toothpicks seem to fit pretty good not too bad all right so let me get my wire cutters here. So what I'm going to do, a lot of people will use wood glue during this and stuff. I'm not going to. I'm going to just use CA glue. It can fill the hole, make a nice solid, and then when I do my sanding, I can see if there's any divot or anything there, and I can fill that with CA glue and then sand it smooth again. So right now, I'm just going to put a little bit of CA glue around the toothpick, and that'll go right into the hole. And I want it to stick up a little bit out of the hole. Looks like it's soaking into the, the wood, soaking it up. There we go. Another one. Another one here. Another one here. I want to be able to see this body. This is a real nice body, real nice shape. The artwork that's going to go on there, I don't want it to be covered up and, and you know, you know me, I really don't care for pick guards all that much to begin with. So I'll start off back over here. Just keep on putting it on until I see it not soak in anymore. I don't mind if it's soaking into the wood at all because that's just going to make it this area a lot stronger. But I do want it to go all the way around the toothpick. Alright, so this one's soaked down. So this one. Actually, they all soaked down a little bit. Just wait for a few seconds because it is soaking into the wood, which is fine by me.
See some bubbles coming up through here. All right, looks like they're all filled. Let that dry. As you can see, they're starting to smoke a little bit. I don't know if you can tell that or not. There's no holes on the back of this that I need to take care of. This is going to be fine for the bridge to ground. And there's really nothing on the back of this. So these guys are pretty much you can tell which ones are deeper and which ones aren't. Go ahead and clip these. This is why I like to use the CA glue because it's a lot faster as far as curing goes. Now I am going to put some CA glue on the top of these to soak into the center of the toothpick. that will just make them a little bit stronger. Alright, so that's all taken care of. I don't need to do anything more with that. Get rid of the wick. Cap up my CA glue. I bought new CA glue tops. So that'll end up helping with keeping the tips from gluing themselves, the caps from gluing themselves to the tips, which is a pain in my ass. Alright, so these guys here pretty much hardened up and I can wipe off find a rag that I can use, I can use this rag wipe off the moisture from the spray I have to get one of those little containers where you just kind of like it's a needle and puts the activator in the area and I can start sanding this thing down now. So this is where the headphone people are going to love this. I've got my 320 on here. Don't need anything stronger than that. All right, so now I can actually, if I wanted to, put a drop of CA glue on top of these. I really don't think it's necessary, but I'm going to anyways, just to give it a little bit more solid protection. Just a drop on top of them. See if anything soaks in. If anything soaks in, then I know that it's actually soaking into the wood, and it doesn't look like it. It's just sitting on top of it. So let those cure up.
those cure up real nice and they are solid so I hit it again Yeah, you can already see in the areas over here that I just went over, this is not flat. This has got a, a dip here, it's got a dip here, it's got a dip over here, and a small dip here. And it looks like this area over here has also got a low spot as well. So I'm going to change my sandpaper and get a new piece here. All right, so you can kind of see now that all those low spots have been taken care of. A lot of it was just in the clear coat itself. Now I got to sand this down. Now this area here, along with the edges, have to be done by hand. If you try to use a electric DA on this, you could end up making this real wavy. And then when you end up putting the next coats of paint on there and the next coats of clear on there, uh, it'll also show up wavy when you get finished. So that's got to all be wet sanded, done by hand. I don't think I went through. No, that's not uh, wood. That's actually the um, sanding sealer there. And I didn't go through. I just went through the paint area over here. But these, you cannot feel them at all. They, they are, they've disappeared. And that's why I like about the CA glue and level sanding it flat. They all go away. And now when I put my paint on here and stuff, they don't show up. All right, so I'm going to get to the wet sanding of this. And that you really don't have to watch me do, do you? No, I don't think so. All right, you guys take it. Have a good one. Take it easy, and I'll catch up with y'all later.